Ahead of all you little minks, I'm going to show you a geometric construction which will astound you and your feline friends. Oh, drat, just when I was about to get interesting. Hello, Lieutenant Dirk Niblick of the Math Brigade at your service. Hello, is Archie there? No, there's no one here by that name, but thank you so much for dialing the wrong number. You're welcome. Uh, now then, Puss, look at this problem. What I want to know is, how do we divide this right angle in half? That's called bisecting. What do you think? Hold your thought, kitty cat. Uh, hello? Is Archie there? No, as I mentioned in a previous conversation with you, Archie is not where I am, which is here. Uh, now then, let me show you. First, draw an arc around the vertex of the angle. Then, where it crosses one leg, draw another arc. And where it crosses this leg, yet another of the same radius. Now, draw a line from the vertex through the intersection of the two arcs, and we have successfully bisected the original angle. Your telephone is ringing, Lieutenant Niblick. Thank you, Mahedable. Hello? This is Archie. Have I had any calls? That's an old joke. You know spring chicken yourself, Dad. Now, where could that cat have got to? She's chased a cockroach off the word processor, Lieutenant. By the way, it's 45 degrees. What's that? The size of each of the angles you created when you bisected that right angle you so artfully constructed. You're absolutely right, Mr. B. Congratulations. I hope I don't win anything. It'd put me in a higher tax bracket. Why don't you come in, neighbor Beasley? Consider it done. Have you ever thought of putting in a door, Lieutenant? I have a door. It's out front. I know, Lieutenant. I was just tweaking your funny bone. No mean trick, either. <laughs> I'll tell you why I'm here, Lieutenant. I'll be away for a few hours, and I'd like you to feed the cat. But you don't have a cat, Mr. B. I know, but you do, and I'd like you to feed your cat to my dog. Oh, now you're joshing again. Uh, what are you up to, really? Well, I've managed to scrimp and save a few dollars over the past few years, Lieutenant, and I'm going to go out and find a good company to invest in. You'd like your money to make money for you, is that it, Mr. B? I'd like anyone to make money for me. I have $500 saved. A goodly amount. And you want to invest it so you'll earn more for your golden years. Uh, without getting too flowery, yes. What do you suggest? Well, you could always loan it to a bank. Loan it to a bank? I thought you went to a bank to get loans. Well, you do, but when you save your money at a bank, you are actually loaning them your money. They will pay you for it. That's called interest. That's interesting. Let's say you save $500 at a bank, and the bank agrees to pay you 6% interest if you let them use it for one year. Uh-huh. 6% times $500 is $30. At the end of the year, you would have $530 instead of your original $500. Well, I'm a ding-dong daddy from Dumas. Or you could buy stock in a company, as you mentioned. And you ought to see me do my stuff. That means you can invest it in a company so they can use your money. They often will pay more in the form of what they call dividends. But it is riskier. Uh, that will be my investment broker. A man who promised to show me a number of companies I might be interested in. I'll take my leave. Uh, Lieutenant Niblick, meet my broker, Jerome J. Junkbond. Uh, charmed, I'm sure. Get in, Mr. Beasley, and let's get going. Ta-ta, Lieutenant. When you see me again, I'll probably be as wealthy as a Major League Baseball pitcher with a 5.37 ERA. Uh, don't forget about the cat, Niblick. I hope Mr. Beasley knows what he's doing. Investing can be a tricky business. And because you're such a good friend, Wally, I've selected three companies and analyzed them. Each has promised to pay a special dividend. That's very kind of you, Mr. Junk Bond, especially since we had not met in person prior to the previous scene. How am I to evaluate these three industrial giants investment-wise? Look at their numbers, Wally. Just take a very good look at the numbers. Your share of the payout would be exactly the same for each company, given your $500 investment. Some restrictions apply, member FDIC. This is the first company I would recommend. What do they make? Orange-flavored cars. Is that good? Well, nothing rhymes with them. And I expect them to pay out 5% of last year's profits. Don't decide yet, Wally. Let me show you another possibility. Show away. Wally, baby, here's company number two. 
Oh, what are they into, if I may use the vernacular? They make electric vernaculars. Why, you... I think these folks will pay out 10% of last year's profits. Holy cow! With apologies to Phil Rizzuto, Harry Carey, and Mahatma Gandhi. That's a good return. Twice as much as the first one. What do these guys make? Smoke? Yes. And the beauty part is it looks like they will pay out 300% of last year's profits. The buy of a lifetime, Wally. Don't pass it up. Great heavens, man. I could be rich as Rockefeller. Gold dust at my feet. On the sunny, on the sunny, on the sunny side of the street. <laughs> Welcome back, neighbor Beasley. Have a pleasant day. Ah, uh, no thanks. I just had one. That's an old joke. You're no spring chicken yourself. But I did have a wonderfully pleasant day. I invested my money in Smokestack Industries. I see. You wouldn't if you hung around Smokestack Industries very long. But get this, Lieutenant. The company is going to pay a whopping 300% of last year's profits. I see. The only other company I was mildly interested in was one paying out a meager 10%. I see. Methinks you protest too much. Why do you keep saying, I see? Because I'm not sure you do, and one of us should. Do you know how many dollars are involved in the profits of these companies? Certainly. Do I look like someone who just fell off the last load of fedoras? The company I invested in had profits of $3,684 last year. Oh, you're a caution, Lieutenant Niblick. How so, neighbor B? My right side neighbor, George Frankly, simply carries a pad and pencil for making notes. What profits did the other companies you were considering have in their recent history? Well, the one which would pay 5% had profits of $1,284,000. And the third, which would pay 10%, had profits of $829,450. And you looked at these three companies and decided that the first company was a better investment than the other two based on their payout percentage? Yes, I did. I'm one smart devil, aren't I? Are you? Yes. Is he? Sorry I'm late, but someone locked me in my dressing room. Did Mr. Beasley make the right decision? Does Dirk think otherwise? Do you think otherwise? I must admit, I don't think otherwise. But then I don't think, and I'm not wise. I'm hardly even other. Puzzle it out and see which company was the best deal. The first, the second, the third. Use your noodle and hurry up, please. I have to go to the library. You're pretty proud of your investment, aren't you? Ah, uh, are you speaking to me or this wet cat here? You, Mr. Beasley, you. Oh, well, sorry, kid. You're out. Take a powder. <coughs> yes, Lieutenant, I have picked the best company and have invested in it. But, Mr. Beasley, I think you've overlooked something. Nonsense. The company I picked will pay 300% of their profits. The ones I rejected would pay a measly 5 and 10%. What you say is true enough, Mr. B, but what is 10% of $829,450? Uh, let me estimate. 10% is nearly $83,000. So you would have gotten your share of $83,000. True enough, but the company Mr. Junkbond totted me onto would pay 300%. Yes, but what is 300% of its previous year's profits? Ah, uh, let's see. Its previous year's profits were $3,684. Right. What is 300% of $3,684? Once again, I must return to my personal think tank here. 300% is three times... Uh, about $11,000. Right again, and... And the third company had a profit of $1,284,000. Now that's a lot. Yes, Mr. B, but at 5%, that's about $60,000. That's less than the payout from the company that had a slightly smaller base. The base, Mr. Beasley, you ignored the base. Oh, that is base. What you're saying to me, then, is in order to know how significant a percentage is, I have to know what it is a percentage of, right? Exactly. Percentages must be based on something. 100% of one pizza is... One pizza. But 10% of 1,000 pizzas is... 100 pizzas. Hold the anchovies, please. 
You may have made an unwise investment, Mr. B. Perhaps I have, Lieutenant Niblick, but you've taught me a valuable lesson about percentages. Well, that's mighty big of you, Mr. Beasley. Even though your naivete may have cost you a boodle of swag, you can still smile. Yes, I can, Lieutenant. Uh, where's your cat? And so, once again, Dirk Niblick, Lieutenant Extraordinaire of the Math Brigade, has helped solve an evocative problem for mankind. Wow! And catkind. That's an old joke. You're no spring chicken yourself.